Go into town in my little red truck. Go into town in my little red truck. Go into town in my little red truck. Early in the morning. What's that, an original? Yeah. Cool. Because I was like, what the hell is that song? It's cool. I dig it. Yeah. Um, truck was important. Truck was a important piece of equipment on a farm yeah. back in the day. Well, I think it still is today. Even, but it still is, but back then it was a lifeline. Yeah, why don't back, we not? Yeah. Back then it's the only, prob- it was often the only vehicle you had. Yeah. It was like, it was your work vehicle, it was your travel vehicle, it was the vehicle that got you into town, it was the vehicle that you hauled stuff in. Yeah. You know, it wasn't just for show, I mean, it was an all-purpose, you know. And back in the day, going to town was a big event. Yeah. Like, even going to, like, your, your closest small town that was only a couple of miles away, that was a big event. And you would spend all day in town if you were going to go to town. Because that was a big investment in time and gas and and everything. You know, you would maybe only go to town, like, once a week. Or maybe even less often. Spend most of your time out on the farm. Yeah. Um, Iowa's counties, there's 99 of them. And how they were devised or created originally was based on you, at any point in that county, you could get to the the county seat within an hour, or sorry, within a within a day on horse. It was a horse. It uh, one day of travel on a horse is one yeah. county. So, which is about thirty miles. Yeah, usually it's about it's roughly thirty miles. So I really like trucks like this. I mean, they're just. And this is a 69 Chevy, for anyone wondering. Yeah. They're just really kind of cool. and uh, Yeah, we both Red, had family that utilized these types of vehicles back in the day. Red trucks, I've noticed, have a, are, are decoratively popular these days. Yeah. You see them a lot. You see them as lawn ornaments. You see them as uh, Christmas decorations. There's something about an old red truck. Like pre, like say, like kind of pre nineteen seventy, yeah. like a pre nineteen seventy red pickup truck, uh, that that really uh, kind of captures a lot of people's imagination. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty cool. Um, I mean, these yeah, were really I, real trucks. They weren't just like SUVs that happen to have a bed attached to them. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have a. A family member who had a truck like this and it was the very I think it was a Chevy and I think it was like right around this time like late 60s early 70s and it was this this shade of red too it wasn't like a deep red it was more like a like a bright red like this like almost almost like an orange like huh. like, like a bright like a bright red not a deep red some yeah. of those other trucks we looked at were more of a deep red. This is what you would call more of a bright red. Yeah, almost almost like a like a cherry tomato red. Yeah. And that's what kind of what, what that truck was too. So I'll be interested to see their reaction when they see this. This is gonna be a gift to them. Yep, I'm offering it to uh, the captain here as one of mine, but I just wanna thank him for his support, encouragement, and all that stuff. He actually came up with the name Dicastinator. He's really original and innovative with a lot of that stuff and yeah i just hit over 300 videos and i just hit 75 subscribers one of my first goals with the channel was to get to 100 and hopefully within the six month mark at the pace i'm going i'll hit 100 and then we'll just keep going and going yeah you know it, you're not at least you're not like mo where it's like like it's not a flaming homa it's a flaming mo you remember that like they, yeah, for his drink. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Homer his came drink. up with the drink, and yeah. Mo took complete credit for it. You know? Not a flaming Homer. <laughs> yeah, flaming Homer. It's like, it's a flaming Mo. I invented it. That's why it's called a flaming Mo. And then Homer's like, must kill Mo. <laughs> Actually, that was a different episode. Um, but he does get, he get, it's weird, he gets psych- psychotically upset at Mo a couple of different times. Yeah. Well, Mo's like his best buddy in the place where he goes to drink, and he's, you know. Yeah. But then he he tells the, the people who want to buy it what the secret ingredient is, which is cough syrup. Mm-hmm. And then, so, uh, so Mo loses everything. Yeah. But, uh, 
Yeah, that was that. That's like one of the first. Uh, that was like that's a pretty early episode. That's like season three, I think. Huh. And it's one of the first Simpsons episodes that really feels a hundred percent like a Simpsons episode. You know, it's like when they were really starting to find their voice, kind yeah. of. But anyway, I appreciate the kind words. Yeah, well, it's good, and you know, you might have a sponsor in some of your videos too. We'll see if we could work out a sponsorship deal and. Yeah, you know, do that. Cause we've had different people. Everybody's like, yo, man, I'm going to start a YouTube channel. I'm going to be an internet personality. I'm going to do that. But it's like... I'm going to buy a GoPro. Yeah, you're going to do all that. Start a DJ in business. You know, I met a guy. He's a pretty cool dude. He actually has a legit DJ in business. Guys like weddings, proms, all kinds of stuff. But he actually makes money with it. He's a cool guy. Because um, we had somebody we knew that did it. And some people get in it really quick and get out of it really quick, too. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I feel like I'm glad I stuck this out. And I put, I probably put a couple hundred bucks into this, if not more. You know, between the stuff that I bought and the equipment and all that. So, um, yeah. but, uh, yeah, so it's been, it's been kind of an interesting adventure. But these trucks, going back to the trucks, they really last a long time they're very utilitarian they're very functional and there's always a market for them you know yeah well this was back in the day where you could replace pretty much any engine part yeah and you could do it yourself yeah for the most part like up until up until the 80s or so right to repair man not that proprietary bullshit yeah so and then the great thing about the red trucks is that if they rust it's not as visible <laughs> yep so but, uh, yeah, I think this'll, this'll be nice. This'll make somebody smile. Yeah. I'm sure I'll hear about it at some point. Yeah. So, but, but uh, uh, and this probably would have been manual transmission. Oh, yeah, because back then people drove manual. They... Yeah, you know, now you're lucky if they can drive automatic. They're just gonna be like, boop, turn that thing on. A lot of the new cars, they don't even have an inner or a, you just have a wireless key. You know? Yeah. <laughs> if all cars became suddenly became stick shift, most of the population wouldn't be able to drive. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. Or even worse than stick shift is those four model T's. Like you have the manual thing that you crank it. And, just, you know, I well, it's like, the, it's like the regular car guy said. Yeah. You don't get in it, you get on it. <laughs> For the Model T? Yeah. Yeah. He said that, like, when you're going uphill, you have to, like, purposely swerve around so that you can jostle the gas in the gas tank. Yeah. So that it, so that it doesn't stall on you when you're going <laughs> up a hill. It's barely even a car, as we know wow. it. Like, it's, uh, Interesting. A lot of those old ones, they didn't even come with an actual seat. You'd have to like put a put like a wooden crate in there to sit on. And they passed the savings on to you. Yeah. Because you could get a Ford Model T for six hundred bucks. Yeah. You know, or three hundred or something at their lowest. I don't remember the exact price. Well, Henry Ford, his revolutionary idea was he wanted to make something cheap enough that his own employees could buy it. Yeah. Which that was really smart, but he also paid his employees five dollars a day. Yeah, he was kind of like the Howard Schultz of uh, of uh, automobiles. Howard Schultz, instead of making it affordable for his employees to work there, he uh, yeah you know, he just made really expensive coffee. He's a Starbucks dude, mm -hmm. and like Howard Schultz and and Henry Ford, they both fought off unions a lot. Yeah, and Ford was the last place to unionize out of GM and Chrysler and all the other you know the big three autos. You know, Henry Ford the second was actually Henry Ford's grandson. Not his son. Yeah. Huh. I would have thought he would have been the third, but yeah. Yeah, no, because the son was named someone else. So. Etzel was, I thought, his son. Yeah. Because there's Etzel and those are really crappy cars. And yeah. So it's uh, interesting. And I've read so many different books on Henry Ford and different things. There's like Henry Ford and the scale of economics, Henry Ford and the, his management philosophy. Henry Ford and the Jews is a pretty trippy one. I gave it to a friend of mine who has a Jewish history and culture blog. 
he really got a kick out of it. The guy was not a big fan of the Jews, and he also got a medal from Hitler. But uh, this is... Did they mention Walt Disney? Uh, not really. Not in that book. That was Henry Ford. I mean, Disney and that would be pretty interesting. Because, yeah. He even had his own sovereign uh, compound called Disney World for a while. We were discussing about who's going to govern the whatever the Mickey Mouse compound is called. I forgot what it is. It's like the something district, you know. Reedy Creek. Re yeah. Reedy Creek Redevelopment District. And that's their own sovereign area. Probably not much of a creek left. <laughs> yep. Um, Chevy. I wonder what those what like what it's all built on. What that's made of. Like, it can't be made of wood. It's probably concrete and metal. Yeah, but even that would like in in, in that environment would uh, deteriorate over time. I mean, it, like, it's just mind boggling to think of that place. Like. What it, not only what it costs to what it costs to build it, but then what it costs to operate it and what it will cost to maintain it in the future. Yeah. Interesting. It'd be pretty screwed up if Disneyland started sinking under the ground. What happens when it gets hit hit head on by a hurricane? What happens when the when the uh, polar ice caps melt, and it, and it becomes more than just a swamp? Yeah. Because oh. I mean, it's a swamp because it's like, like you know, maybe ten feet above sea level, yeah. if, if that. You know, yeah. what's going to happen when it's at sea level? You then know? it's the end of tomorrow, today. And yeah. the Epcot Center will rise, and you know, Epcot Center shall rise again. And it'll be <laughs> and it'll be interesting too, because maybe it will become a libertarian utopia. Where it's its own sovereign land and it rises up as four to four sinks. You know? Oh boy! Ho ho! <laughs> I am your supreme leader. Yeah. I never got Mickey Mouse. I never liked Disney. No. I just never cared for it. Like, am I supposed to like this thing? No. And then Goofy, like, where he's like a man dog? Yeah. And. Donald Duck. Donald Duck was the only kind of interesting one because you had the the whole Duck family. You had yeah. Daisy. You had Scrooge McDuck. You had the the the, tw the triplets. They kind of kind of almost went off and did their own thing, which was kind of cool. And I believe they drove a red pickup <laughs> Chevrolet. Truck. And I'll show a little bit more of this here. Because I know our, our collaborations are like super high in my ratings. We get hundreds of views, total watch time. They're like, compared to your 50 second one, your 15 minute ones of yeah. rambling are good. But we used to, back in the day, do rambling videos on the Captain's channel. But he took a lot of them down because they were... The beverage rants. Well, I don't, we don't even going to say what they were. Some of you might have seen those. Yeah, well, very few probably. Because they weren't that popular and they were... It's probably a good thing that they weren't. They'll never be seen again. And on that note, hope you all like, subscribe, and share on this video while you still can see it. And uh, this is the Dicastinator and... Captain Unusual. Yep, in his new shiny red 1969 Chevrolet pickup truck. You're the next winner on the Get Your Diecast Car Now. Oh, do, do, my do, God, do, oh, my God. Do, oh, my God. You can't see me, but now I'm like that. Now I'm like that 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 chick on uh, the Price Is Right who like jumped out of her dress. Oh wow, that's great. With her with her boobs bouncing all over the place, but uh, you can't see that. Yeah, we we always end on a really high note. I was just gonna end on the music, and now we're on a half naked woman running around yeah. so i was just trying to give you an image of what i like how i'm feeling inside right now yeah because you guys never see us i think some people know who we are but you never get a visual here because that's just not how we roll because then the facial recognition software kicks in and yeah. they send in the drones and send in the, the drones, drones. <laughs> and i want to cut this off before the 15 minute mark so we're almost there have a great night